listening to Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. In the studio with you, it's JJ, Darren, and Pedro. Analysis of both Bitcoin chains, first look at OMC Go, Bitcoin chicanery and censorship, all this and more on episode 220 here on Wednesday, August 23rd, 2017. In the traditional markets, we have gold up to $1,290, silver steady at $17.07, oils up to $48 and 37 cents, and the Dow is uh, down to 21,812 points. Uh, the 30 the year Treasury uh, yield is down as well to 2.747%. Thank you, Darren. In the, Bit- in the crypto markets, Bitcoin is down to $4,120. Bitcoin Cash is up to $657. Litecoin is up to $52.30. And Ethereum is up to $300.16. And Dash is up to $290. Just a reminder that you can tune in to Neocache Radio every Wednesday night. Don't want to miss a single moment of awesome Neocache content, including special episodes and bonus interviews. Subscribe to our podcast on Google Play Music, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Podcast Addict, and many, many more. Well, let's start out with an update on the Bitcoin networks and Bitcoin Cash from yeah, Darren. So, uh, yeah, so uh, we have a Bitcoin Cash became more profitable than mine this, uh, this past week. With miners jumping on for a profit during this time, Bitcoin blocks came out at a rate just under five per hour. You know, the target is six per hour, so that's a little bit slower. The slower blocks caused an already backlogged network to become even more backlogged as transaction fees got as high as $20 per kilobyte. And that's that was a few blocks that came out uh, with a fee of $20 per kilobyte. Uh, and that was about five Bitcoins for the whole block of uh, fees. That's pretty amazing. Wow. Uh, currently, the Bitcoin Cash network is somewhat frozen with a block coming up out around every six hours. We suspect this to trigger an emergency di- difficulty adjustment to, to bring Bitcoin Cash back to profitability uh, during that six or seven hour period. Uh, during yeah, the, between the two blocks, uh, all transactions cleared with one block just under two megabytes. Uh, the possibility of bigger blocks on on the Bitcoin Cash chain made this possible. the The interaction of the two major SHA two fifty six coins is spectacular to watch, interesting to say the least. Uh, JJ, my analysis without emergency difficulty adjustments suggests that uh, there would be a bias for both coins being at a high difficulty. We have um, we have more on some of the social ramifications in just a bit. All right, thank you for that, Darren. Uh, the Bitcoin network otherwise is proceeding along and making blocks much faster. It is uh, important to note that just at, just before the switchover in difficulty, and then of course the subsequent switchover in miners, that the Bitcoin network was at about a hundred million bytes in the mempool. And they were having block times of roughly the last few blocks were about a half an hour or so apart. So so two blocks an hour was where it was just prior to the switchover. And Darren, in, in our Twitter feed, uh, you had you had put the so Darren and I both do Twitter, so it's sometimes hard to know which one I was posted what. But you posted that they could burn through the difficulty in in, in three days. Yeah, that's you were, pretty much what happened. That's pretty much what happened. It was a little bit less, quicker, yeah. yeah, than three days. So uh, Neo Cash Radio is once again very accurate in their analysis of the markets. Uh, moving forward, OMC Go, OMG, Plasma, E Wallet, and Dex distributed uh, exchange. So OMC Go is the newest product from the company OMC, a Thailand uh, Thailand payment platform. OMC has been in business since 2013, offering white label software developer kit that allows customizable point-of-sale interfaces and Stripe-like functions. So the Stripe card, you, you can uh, do a, a card swipe on your, your cell phone, basically. Uh, <clears throat> OMC Go has a ticker symbol of OMG, and they recently raised $25 million with their token sale. The ERC-20 uh, OMG token is based on the public Ethereum blockchain. Southeast Asia has these token-based payment systems in wide use, mostly with the telecom providers. These providers typically have closed-loop systems. Only say Go is looking to offer a better solution, a unified platform with customizable payment gateways. Previously, it was thought that OMC Go would make use of the upcam- upcoming Raiden network, but it's now clear they are skipping right to Plasma. Now, this is something newly revealed by... Uh, 
the, uh, the authors, uh, Joseph Hoon, who is the author of The Lightning Network, and Vitalik Buterin, Buterin uh, which we know who Vitalik is, of course. Uh, anyway, so an abstract is... I'm not really going to read it for you. We'll have some on our website, and you should go and check it out if you're interested in, in the scalable autonomous smart contracts, which really sounds uh, high-tech. Darren, are you skeptical at all about this? Yes, I am skeptical. I <clears throat> haven't had time to review the details and all of that. I mean, I, I'd be happy if it worked, but I, uh, I'm, I'm uh, keeping on the sidelines right now. Okay. Uh, well, so th- that's sort of the situation there, and I am uh, currently in talks with the Omi Say Go team to get an interview. So hopefully we'll see that uh, next month on neocashradio.com. So moving forward, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about something that has been going on for quite a while. Oh, yes. Bitcoin.org has become as ridiculous as our Bitcoin, or the yes. subreddit our Bitcoin, B-I-T-C-O-I-N. And trust me, they're ridiculous. The world of crypto is full of open source collaboration and idea sharing, except in a few notable locations. The Bitcoin subreddit known as our Bitcoin and Bitcoin.org. These locations have become a place where censorship is at an all-time high. In each case, the individual largely at fault, and isn't just him, has been Michael... Mark Carded, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, more commonly known as Thamos, right, uh, is, is a, he's also a Bitcoin talk administrator, he's a, med, uh, a Reddit moderator and a contributor of the Bitcoin.org GitHub. I have personally stopped using the our Bitcoin subreddit a long time ago so due to the limited bandwidth of conversations. It is commonplace to see comments and threads removed for any number of asinine reasons. Lately, Michael Orthamos has been hard at work creating a fictional world around Bitcoin. At this point, it would be fair to call it a cult or a religion or something very strange like that. Those that don't get in line, as we'll see in some of these GitHub comments, are censored or banned for violating the tenets of this cult or some policy that they fabricated to control the dialogue. The latest inquisition has surrounded BitPay and the upgrades needed to the BitCore client in order to fulfill the 2x portion of SegWit2x. Ever since the fork of Bitcoin Cash, Adam Back and the employees of Blockstream have argued vehemently against the notion that the block size increase should happen and subsequent hard fork should happen. While the situation isn't as straightforward as, and simple as the disagreement among peers anymore, it was that way for a while, Then it became more like a political campaign with tactics you'd expect from an American election. Mudslinging, character assassination, outright lies, fear-mongering, and succinct narrative with talking points reiterated ad nauseum. The boogeyman has always been the increase in block size and the hard fork that must accompany it. Now that the boogeyman has once again been dispelled with the recent split of Bitcoin Cash, the narrative has, has lost some of its luster. The fear-mongering is receiving diminishing returns, and the only option left is to ban anyone who seeks to upset the fairy tale. That's true. On top of this, you have journalists like Aaron Van Wertham from Bitcoin Magazine writing incorrect articles that seek only to confuse people, like the R Bitcash subreddit. Darren has some recent experience being moderated on Reddit. Darren, wh- wh- yeah, so I accidentally made a uh, post, post, and I, I made it to the wrong subreddit. So I I meant to make it to the RBTC Reddit, and uh, so that seems to be an uncensored uh, uh, environment. Uh, the the uh, at least the moderation logs are public, and, and so you can go and check that out. I haven't myself, but um, so I meant to post something about Bitcoin Cash in the RBTC Reddit, and um, and I accidentally w- w- went to the Bitcoin Reddit, and uh, I immediately got auto moderated, and uh, then I got. S- suggested that hey why don't you go to the this bcash reddit now bcash is a project that that exists i hear but you know that's not bitcoin cash and so i go to the bcash reddit and i you know i got a weird feeling about this so i post something and i just post a truck tra- trail block and or trade block and uh i it was a particular block that was five over five bitcoins per uh, of all fees on that block, and I say, oh, twenty dollars a kilobyte. Oh my goodness, uh, and and, uh, and I really had a funny feeling about this, JJ. So I 
Uh, I logged myself out. And sure enough, what I had posted just disappeared. Like it wasn't on the new thing. So I, I believe this is what is referred to as a shadow ban. So like there's an immediate shadow ban on somebody that visits this Reddit or at least somebody that visits this Reddit getting, uh, getting directed there from this. And, and it's completely dishonest to send somebody to this uh, Bcash Reddit. Um, it, it's, it's, it's clearly trying to be deceptive and... Uh, and I, I, it gives me a bad feeling in my stomach to, to know that, the, that there is such a situation associated with crypto. We can't just talk about things. Um, I feel like it's horrible because um, people who are maybe making uh, money decisions based on information they get from the Bitcoin Reddit, they could lose a lot of money and they might have been able to uh, uh, basically, uh, ha- if they had more information, they might have uh, been a better actor in this uh, in this situation in this situation, so, um, but you know what people do is what people do, and and I'm just glad that I can get on Neo Cash Radio today and just kind of tell people how it is, and it's really funny because some people say there's no censorship on Reddit, and like oh post something, oh I got banned, okay you see there's censorship right, and um, it's an everyday thing, yeah. it's gotten it's gotten far worse yeah. as as I noted in this little write up here. It's that because the boogeyman has been dispelled, the hard fork has not yielded a uh, world-ending global catastrophe. You know, it's like, oh, well, well the hard f- we can't do it. We just can't. We, and and they, they, they keep calling it contentious. But I argue, yeah. and I argue this as strongly as I can as an individual right here, that the number of people who they represent, as I always, always hear, we represent the community when this is being said, that, that no, you don't. You represent a very small number of people, and you have a lot of sock puppets, and it's a lot of noise, and it's a lot of intelligence tactics. That's what it is. <clears throat> and it's only a matter of time before we, you know, we really had to talk about this. I've been, I've been seeing the nonsense on the uh, Bitcoin subreddit um, in talking about leading up to the, you know, the SegWit activation and, and the hard fork. And, you know, if you go over to the BTC, you have people, you know, showing th- this is what I posted. It was a legitimate question. It was not trolling. It, it, I wanted to get information, and I got banned for it simply because there was a hint that, you know, the, the Bitcoin uh, maximalists didn't like uh, in, in that question. So, you know, this, this has been coming, and you know, I, I really see the Bitcoin subreddit as really toxic. You're, you're not going to get um, good information there. You're going to get a, a one viewpoint. And it's not just the Bitcoin subreddit, it's also Bitcoin.org, because this article points out, and you can click through the links we provide, to their, their own words. Read these comments. Read the comments that Thamos and these people say. I want you to read their own words, because then you can see exactly how, how insane some of these people really must be. But they want to remove BitPay and all its related uh, accoutrement from the Bitcoin.org site because they are, well, they, heaven forbid, they talk about the, the heresy of a 2x, of an actual block size increase on Bitcoin. So what happens when all of the major uh, you know, companies and, and projects in this space start talking about that? They're going to ban everyone? Yeah, well, well no, that's know. the thing that they, they just they they can ban everyone, and then there's just their little group of of trolls and, and sock puppets, but, that echo the same thing over and over again. And, but, and Darren, I think the the block you you were referring to is block number four eight one six one eight. Over five bitcoins in, in fees. Yeah, and there's a well, there was actually a few of those blocks, I believe, and um, yeah, so it's it's just kind of crazy, and um, and it's worse. JJ, it gets worse. Um, so you're talking about these sock puppets and all that. And so such a clear hint that they're, they are not being honest is they use the term B, bit B cash, right? They don't say Bitcoin cash. They say B cash. That is a clear and decisive intended to confuse term that people are using. And so when you, you'll, you'll see these people posting about Bcash on the BTC Reddit, then you know immediately that they're not being sincere and that they're trying to steer, they're trying to take their religion and force it down everybody else's slow throat. Now, I don't think those people should be welcome on BTC, although it's intending to be an uncensored environment. So it's kind of hard to, uh, yeah, but, but they, they, just, they can be called out. Yeah, they can, yeah. you know, they can, we can call they, them they can, out. Yeah, you can, it's better to have a conversation. And, and, you know, uh, it's it's better to have a conversation. But here's the thing with the with a, a lot of the individuals, and let me tell you once again, it's a very small number because it, it really isn't a lot. They, they 
it's a few individuals, but they're all of this this religious mindset behind the Blockstream solution. And we talked about Blockstream when they first came out way back in the day on new cash radio. And what's the thing I said? I said, I don't like the way this smells. And we have an eight megabyte block on the on the Bitcoin cash chain that says they're all lying. Yeah. And they have been lying for years. They have. So we I strongly advise that all the new new users, any user, stay away from Bitcoin.org and the R Bitcoin subreddit. And, and the thing is, like people don't even know what's wrong with SegWit. Like the selfish miner attack is that can be that much more severe with SegWit. Uh, they you know, the the transactions are just not as safe because you could prune the the uh, the the signature. So if you're verifying the blockchain, you can verify the proof of work, but you don't even know if the signature was valid. And that's, I mean, to me, that's just kind of throwing. That's kind of fundamentally altering Bitcoin, and they're the ones that say they are Bitcoin, which is complete ridiculousness. It's just it's religiousness at this yeah, point. Yeah, so so there's only two outcomes to this, and that's Bitcoin cash wins or they both die. That's it. Because I mean, the altcoins already are taking uh, a, a significant portion of the market share. I think there's there could be some. Uh, I, I don't know why this price in Bitcoin has gone up, but you can see people post after post after post about. It. I just tried to send some money, and I had to pay five dollars to send a hundred or something like that. And so people are learning that this is not the way that we will do business in the future. And they can just, uh, they, they can they, just give themselves enough rope. That's, that's all we have to do. Just let them be themselves. And uh, Right. All, all this talk in the spring about, no, we can't go over one megabyte. No, we can't increase transactions. All, all this back and forth between the camps. Meanwhile, when, when Ethereum had, you know, some, some tra- high transactions, the community just agreed to increase the gas. Right, and, 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 it, and it was built in where they could do that without having some dictator at the top or a few dictators at the top uh, to, to agree to it. So there you have it, folks. You can check it out for yourself and make your own decisions, and that's that's the important part here. And one question I saw a lot is what happens when Bitcoin reaches 8 megabytes? Well, there's there's four clients for Bitcoin Cash. There's Bitcoin ABC, Bitcoin XT, Bitcoin Classic, and uh, what's the third one, the fourth uh, one? Is it Bitcoin Unlimited or? Yeah, Bitcoin Unlimited. Yeah. So there's four of them. And I'm not sure about Bitcoin Classic, but three of them have an adjustable block size. Bitcoin XT was supposed to go 8, 16, 32 and on a schedule. And uh, Bitcoin ABC, ABC stands for adjustable block size cap or something like that. And, um, yep. and then uh, uh, Unlimited was doing the emergence, uh, emergent consensus, which I wasn't too hot on, but... Uh, at least it has something built in where we don't have to go through this again. Yeah. Well, it's it's really it's really sad because there's a lot of that going on in the crypto world that is very much uh, creative and positive, but there is one place that is that is not, and that is our Bitcoin and the Bitcoin.org website. Once again, I suggest you find resources and information elsewhere. And another thing that our Bitcoin won't tell you is the most popular trade on Shapeshift is. Bitcoin to Bitcoin Cash right now. It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, the Bitcoin Cash is network, like I said, is kind of frozen. So people are buying a, bit, a more or less frozen coin. Uh, but, you know, the expectation is that its difficulty will drop and, and the blocks will start rolling again. Well, let's move on to some Ethereum news with Pedro. Yes, uh, the Philippine Central Bank approves licenses for two cryptocurrency exchanges. On August 19th, the Philippine Star reported that Bango Central Philippines BSP has granted two cryptocurrency companies licenses to operate Bitcoin exchanges. Nestor Espinita, junior governor of BSP, spoke about the dramatic growth of the digital currency industry and emphasized the importance of oversight. Quote, we see a rapid increase in the trajectory of virtual currency. It is coming from a small base, but increasing. That is why we decided to require the exchanges to register. Espinita added that the exchanges are locally based, but have international roots. Uh, those exchanges were not list named in this article. Wow, excellent. Thank you for that. Uh, we've got a couple of quick mentions here in the ever-evolving world of crypto. The Nonprofit Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies, or MAPS, has uh, already accepts Bitcoin for philanthropic gi- giving, uh, is adding Ethereum and Litecoin to the list of accepted currencies. Uh, since first accepting Bitcoin donations in 2013, MAPS has collected 115 Bitcoin, 
The latest benefit features MDMA-assisted psychotherapy for PTSD research. And if you're looking for more philanthropic opportunities, the Free Ross Ulbricht campaign can use some help. We have yet another news story that illustrates just how corrupt the U.S. Secret Service agents Sean Bridges and Karl Mark Forrest really are. In this installment, Sean Bridges admits to stealing more than 1,600 bitcoins out of a federal account on Bitstamp and then attempting to money launder them through BTCE and, surprise, Bitfinex. New court documents show this wasn't a one-shot theft. Now, former Secret Service agent Sean Bridges moved the Bitcoin out in 100 Bitcoin increments over weeks, a methodical intentional theft of funds. The testimony of both Sean Bridges and Karl Mark Force is suspect at best and contrived at worst. Given the latest revelations, uh, revelations, their testimony ought to be thrown out as evidence and Ross ought to be given another chance to prove his innocence. But uh, moving on to more philanthropic donation uh, opportunities and, and that sort of stuff, Darren, uh, you are looking at getting the Learning Center to accept cr- crypto, Yeah, right? so uh, opening up in January is uh, we intend to open up what we're calling Big Fish Learning Center. And um, it we're um, I'm going to be uh, working two days a week for the Big Fish uh, Learning Center and uh, basically uh, teaching uh, or mentoring and teaching uh, high school and middle school age uh, students or, or, or we call them members. Actually, they they join the club and they're members. So. Uh, wow. So, Excellent. Yeah. So um, I'm still talking with uh, we've got a team of three people. There's uh, basically three teachers, myself included, and uh, we're, uh, we're uh, going to launch in Dover, and uh, we're currently in the stages of setting up a, bit, uh, a, a bank account and a Coinbase account so that we can accept donations. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, so be on the lookout for a, a way to uh, help me and help uh, some, uh, some uh, young people uh, be exposed to some math and, and languages. Excellent. Well, well, we'll be sure to talk more about that when uh, more information is available. And, and also, Neocash Radio ha- happily accepts donations in many currencies. We have uh, Bitcoin, Ether, Dash, NXT, and Bitcoin Cash addresses available at the bottom of each of our blog posts with our show uh, posting on our website, neocashradio.com. Pedro. Sure. Sure, BTC to open Peruvian market to Ether trades. South American cryptocurrency exchange SureBTC now allows users to trade in Ether and Bitcoin. The exchange says that it hoped the move would contribute to making the underlying technology accessible for all South Americans. In the announcement made August 16th, the exchange also said it would suspend commission fees for Ether and Bitcoin trades until September 30th. In a translated statement, CEO of SureBTC Guillermo Torabella said the discounted rate, quote, is definitely an incentive for users to try our service, end quote. He went on to clarify the discount will not apply to users in Chile or Colombia whom the exchange already serves. So this is good news. I, I like seeing more activity in, uh, in the South American market. There's That's, great potential there. Yeah, you, so you've got two stories about exchanges so far opening up, uh, one in South America and one in the Philippines. Uh, wow, it's just growing very fast. And in in you know the case of, of the, their multi you know it's not just bitcoin to cash it's you know bitcoin and ether and once you got to be ether then of course you can bring on the tokens right and once that sort of stuff. once users of those exchanges can acquire ether to your point jj yeah the whole you know token ecosystem is available to them right and uh so you got another one here pedro sure this is big news uh, shapeshift sidestep securities in light of the sec's recent guidelines regarding the dow Shapeshift will review the tokens listed on its platform. Shapeshift may delist tokens that can be classified as securities under the Howley test. On August 17th, Shapeshift released a statement detailing its hands-on approach to securities compliance. Using the Howey test, the company's counsel will conduct a review to determine which tokens offered on the Shapeshift platform may fall under the jurisdiction of the Securities and Exchange Commission. Quote, we will need to adapt our service offerings to ensure it's not miscategorized as securities exchange, end quote, explains Emily from Shapeshift. Quote, to err on the side of caution, we may need to halt our inscriptions to certain blockchains. This means we may need to delist some types of tokens from the platform, which is unfortunate for our users who have enjoyed the ability to participate in these experimental and innovative technologies, end quote. 
So, um, so what is the Howey test? What is the Howey test? So it's a test created by the Supreme Court for determining whether certain transactions qualified as, quote, investment contracts, end quote. If so, those transactions are considered securities and therefore subject to certain disclosure and registration requirements. So under the Howey test, the, tra- the transaction is an investment contract if, one, it is an investment of money, two, there is an expectation of profits from the investment, Three, the investment of money is in a common enterprise. And four, any profit comes from the efforts of a promoter or third party. Wow. So we did talk about this a little bit on a, yep. on a previous show. And one of the, one of the main things that um, somebody much smarter in the, in the legal world for this than, than we are uh, mentioned that, you know, some of the things that companies can do to avoid being having their tokens classified um, as a security and, and one of those things is that there has to be a real use for that token. Like that token is part of how that ecosystem, how that business plan works. Right. Well, and, and you know, honestly, from, from a utilitarian standpoint of uh, an investor or gambler, let's say a gambler, uh, who wants to buy a token that's going to go up in value, if it doesn't have any utility, if it's just a token... Then, then the SEC kind of sees it as like a share in that project. Whereas if it's uh, something like the Gollum token, for for example, where there's that token is used for the actual transactions. So again, this is not legal advice. This is all this is all evolving, and I'm sure things are going to change based on how the government looks at things. Uh, but it will be something that I'll be touching on on fu- future episodes as we get some more clarity from the uh, legal community. Right, or or a lack of clarity. Who knows? Like the the, the difference between FinCEN and SEC and rulings and and things like that. It's already made the, the waters very muddy. Um, but moving on, uh, we have a, a a listener has requested an update on Expanse, and we first talked about Expanse back in episode one hundred and forty nine, more than two years ago. Expanse is a spinoff of the Ethereum code into a new blockchain with a focus on using a DAO, or Decentralized Autonomous Organization. There was no ICO or fundraising event. Rather, the reserve of EXP that was created for the development team at the Genesis block is locked in a smart contract and then will be voted on and released over time based on the DAO. So... The latest news from the dev team has the first prototype of the Expanse DAO being released in the near future. They also recently partnered with CenturyLink CTL, the third largest telecommunications company in the U.S., and they are announcing the launch of Token Lab to aid in token sales and uh, in the ex- on the Expanse blockchain. So that's that's sort of the the latest update on Expanse. Um, next up, uh, Centric Card. So. We had the Empire card story that happened last week, and that was, you know, sort of our scam warning. And we're, we're waiting, still waiting to hear from Empire Card or any sort of news that will dispel our warning about a scam because we can change our minds. Just give us data that proves otherwise. And see the the Centric Card. We've gotten a couple emails, people seeing uh, scam warnings about Centric Card. And believe me, we have looked into the Centric Card as well as we can. Now, there are limitations to how deep we can go. I believe I may have found where the, the company is registered, but it's it's difficult to actually prove that it's that company, things like that. So the, as far as we can tell, the Centric Card isn't a scam in the same sense that Empire Card seems like a scam. Now, like anything in the crypto world, something could happen tomorrow that, that would cause any sort of number of problems. Maybe their, their ICO token contract has some flaw, or maybe the Ethereum blockchain has some issue, and then all the tokens that are on top of the Ethereum blockchain have issues as well. We can't really predict those sorts of things, and so, of course, we want to, and, and it, really shouldn't be have, it really shouldn't have to be said because you should understand that you are responsible for your actions. You are personally responsible for every action that you create. No matter who told you or guided you or instructed you or anything like that, ultimately, you are responsible for pulling the trigger of whatever decision it is that you made. But here it is, a disclaimer. Any content on the Neocash Radio podcast and or website should not be regarded as financial or legal advice. Please be mindful of any and all regulations regarding your cryptocurrency in your particular jurisdiction. Never invest more, never invest, or gamble more than you're willing to lose, and always safeguard your digital currency by keeping it in a wallet whose private keys you control. So that's sort of our boilerplate warning we're going to be adding to the shows and whatnot. 
But uh, so it's been a, a very uh, news intense and as well as emotionally intense episode because it's really disappointing once again to see the level of censorship and chicanery that is going on in the Bitcoin.org as well as our Bitcoin locations. And so, uh, you know, we just remind people once again to be very careful where you're getting your news from. And if you see a news story that uses the word Bcash about 25 times, you should really be suspect about the motivations behind that author. And you should question the research ability of that author as well, because oh. it's very clear that, that we're, they're not talking about Bitcoin Cash or they're not saying that. Um, yeah. And, and I guess I have my own little statement, JJ, in a similar vein that... You know, if you stay on the sidelines on this and uh, and the price goes up and all that, I don't think that's such a bad thing. Uh, you can you can always buy a little bit later and uh, and still reap the benefits of the use of it once this shakes out and we figure out what is the best to use. That's right. Well, so we're going to actually uh, restart the music because that was a little, a little okay. Sure. Yeah. Let's keep going. Yeah. So yeah. So just uh, stay on the sidelines. Yeah. Why not be safe? Or, yeah. Make the smart moves. Of course, yeah. you know, we're not giving you advice it, to buy or sell. Exactly. But uh, anyway, for Neocash Radio, you can tune in every week. Uh, this past week, we did an interview on, uh, if you went to our blog, neocashradio.com, you could see that I had an uh, updated interview with uh, Music Economy. Check that out. For Neocash Radio, this is JJ. Darren. And Pedro. Neocash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. Neocash Radio.